This is J. Stephen Roberts of Real Crusades History. If you're looking at your screen right now, you will see the cover of a really excellent book called Caliphs and Kings, Spain, 796 to 1031. This is a book by a really great medieval scholar by the name of Roger Collins. And this is a book that is basically about the history of Spain during that period when the Muslims were most dominant. The book itself is really fascinating, and I hope you will read it, but the introduction, the first few paragraphs of it, are really powerful, especially since there are so many misconceptions that are uh, floating around out there in the popular imagination about uh, Al-Andalus, about Islamic Spain. In recent years, to bring up the Umayyad period in Spanish history in casual conversation with friends, colleagues, and complete strangers, often raises the issue of whether this was indeed that golden age of tolerance in which members of the three Abrahamic faiths of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam coexisted in harmony and mutual respect, to which question there can be but one quick answer, and that is a wholly negative one. If a fuller or more nuanced reply is required, then it would involve saying that if there were any truth in such a notion, then it only applied for a very limited period of 40 years or fewer in the mid-10th century in just one location, the city of Cordoba, to a very small sector of society, the intellectual elite attached to the caliphal court. Beyond these chronological, geographical, and social confines, life in Umayyad al-Andalus, as recorded in our far-from-insubstantial sources, looks more like Thomas Hobbes' War of All Against All than a realization of the prophetic vision of the wolf dwelling with the lamb and the lion lying down with the goat. The Arab conquest created the conditions for a state of almost permanent warfare in the Iberian Peninsula that put a special emphasis upon destruction and the display of dead enemies with a lively slave trade as an additional incentive. This continued throughout the period covered in this book and in scale and intensity exceeded anything to be found elsewhere in Western Europe in these centuries. Even in Cordoba, at its cultural apogee, it will have been hard to escape the reek of decomposing flesh from the decapitated heads displayed on the gates and the bodies of those publicly crucified left to rot in front of the palace. Quite why this roseate image of an age of mutual toleration has taken so strong a hold on the popular imagination both in the United States and throughout Europe is not easy to say. Perhaps we would like to believe that something we wish to achieve today once existed in the past and therefore can seem an attainable goal. Worthy as the ideal may be, it needs to stand on its own two feet and not be made to rely on overly optimistic and thus anachronistic readings of the past if there was a brief flicker of such mutual toleration in the Umayyad period it was not something that was consciously intended or was recognized at the time. So there you have it. That's a very interesting uh, reading from this book, Caliphs and Kings. Roger Collins was formerly a fellow of the Institute for Advanced Studies in the Humanities in the University of Edinburgh, UK. He is now a fellow in the School of History, Classics, and Archaeology of the University of Edinburgh. He has published widely in medieval Spanish and European history, and his books include The Basques, The Arab Conquest of Spain, 710 to 797, The Oxford Archaeological Guide to Spain, and Charlemagne, that's a book from 1998, Visigothic Spain, 409 through 711, and most recently Keepers of the Keys of Heaven, A History of the Papacy. So quite a few excellent books, and that what I just read there is from the back flap of this uh, book by Roger Collins. 
Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that reading, and I do hope you will get a copy of Caliphs and Kings and uh, read it for yourself. The entire book is quite interesting. My new book, Why Does the Heathen Rage, a novel of the Crusades set during the reign of King Baldwin II of Jerusalem, is now available on Amazon. Click on the link on the screen to purchase your copy, or follow the link in the about box of this video.